So far, you've just been taking my word for it that when we're at equilibrium, everyone's as best off as they're going to be able to be. But now I'm going to show you why that's true. With our supply and demand model, we can measure consumer surplus and producer surplus. Consumer surplus is the benefit consumers receive from buying a good or service. We measure it by taking what the individuals would have been willing to pay minus the amount that they actually paid. Another way to put it is it's the area under the demand curve to the market price. We can see it as the green triangle there. The quantity being sold of camcorders is our equilibrium, our Q star. The price that individuals would have been willing to pay is measured by the demand curve and our market price, our equilibrium price is what they had to pay. So everybody who is willing to pay really high for camcorders have received a great amount of consumer surplus. Those who are willing to pay right about what they did received a small amount of consumer surplus, but still they received some amount of surplus. We can also measure producer surplus, which is the benefit producers receive from selling a good or service. We measure this by taking the price the producer actually received minus the price that producer would have been willing to accept. We measure this with our red triangle, which is the area above the supply curve to the market price. Again, the quantity that was actually sold in the market is Q star. The supply curve represents the prices that firms would have been willing to accept. The market price is what they actually received, and therefore everything under the market price but above our supply curve is considered producer surplus. Together, consumer surplus plus producer surplus is called social surplus. And social surplus is at its maximum at equilibrium because consumer surplus can't be increased without decreasing producer surplus and vice versa. If we wanted to increase producer surplus, we'd have to take some of that benefit, some of that surplus away from consumers. And this is exactly what price ceilings and floors do. Let's take, for example, that there's some sort of price ceiling put into place. Maybe consumers aren't happy with the high price of camcorders. And a price ceiling is put into place. With our price ceiling in place, we end up having a new quantity that ends up actually being sold. In this case, it'll be the quantity supplied because that's the first curve we reach when price is below equilibrium. That's telling us that at this price ceiling, there is going to be a smaller quantity actually being sold on the market. So what does that do to producer and consumer surplus? Well, we see that the surplus that consumers receive is going to increase, but the surplus that producers receive will decrease. Now, there's another area that used to be a mixture of producer and consumer surplus that is now nothing. This black triangle here is what is known as deadweight loss. This is the loss in social surplus that occurs when a market produces an inefficient quantity. This market is not producing its equilibrium quantity anymore, and therefore there are some people out there that would have been willing to purchase camcorders that are not able to because firms aren't supplying a large enough amount. There are also some firms out there that would be able to receive some producer surplus if they were able to charge a higher price and therefore would be willing to provide some more camcorders. At this point, it's possible for producer surplus and consumer surplus to increase. But this price control, this price ceiling, is stopping the market from being able to become efficient again. 
with this price ceiling, some producer surplus is transferred to the consumers. At a price floor, some of the consumer surplus is transferred to producers. Removing price controls so that price and quantity can return to equilibrium will increase the economy's social surplus and make everyone better off.